The Walrus of Love, Barry White, Jamie Louise with you on BBC Radio Wales. 23 minutes to 10. Who's going to look after us when we get older? It's a question we all have to ask at some point in our lives, but uh, as the population gets older and we're living longer, it's a question that's becoming more and more prevalent. The social commentator and futurist Mal Fletcher is with us. Mal, a very good morning. You are a futurist. You're a man who looks into the future. Good morning, Jeremy. Well, I try. I try to take an educated guess at some things that will happen in the future. (laughs) And tell us about how you've been looking at just getting older and the impact that that will have. What what kinds of areas have have you been looking at specifically? Well, Louise, uh, the first most obvious one is life expectancy. You know, right now, for every year of medical research, we're potentially adding 0.2 of a year to life expectancy. And that's in a world where more than a third of British people are already over 50 and the leading healthcare group. Then there's the issue of uh, urbanisation. You know, cities are growing. I don't have to tell your listeners that we can see it. But 20% of the population of most cities in the UK now is made up of people over 65 or who have health problems. And that number is definitely going to grow. And there's one other issue I think that's very important to this, and that is that, that what I call the technology gap. It's replacing the old generation gap. Just as we're becoming um, more connected through our digital technologies, I think in some ways we're becoming more isolated, and that does affect the way generations relate to one another. Well, we'll talk about the technology gap a little later, but I first want to um, suggest to you that it's, it's a good thing that we're all living longer, healthier lives. We should celebrate it as well, shouldn't we? Absolutely. I mean, it is a good thing. Uh, it, does, it does raise some questions, though, about how generations will empathize with one another, especially in the wake of that digital revolution. Um, One of the keys, I think, is is to start now to get generations working together, trying to understand each other better, because the three generations that have influence today are really quite different. The boomers, the so-called Generation X, and the young millennials under 30. Very different ways of thinking. And we don't live as close to each other in terms of our family members these days, do we, as we used to? No, we're not as well connected uh, in that respect. We have, shall we say, more connections, but they're more shallow or more tenuous, uh, generally speaking. And that's where, of course, digital tech has helped us. It helps us develop a, a wide number of contacts, but they're not necessarily uh, contacts with any depth or any longevity. In many cases, they're quite temporary. Well, we've got lots to talk uh, about, and we'd love to hear from you this morning and uh, your thoughts. Um, who do you think should look after us as we get older? Maybe who looks after you already? 03700 100 110, Jamie Louise at bbc.co.uk, or you can text us on 81012. More from uh, Mal Fletcher in just a few moments. Uh, we're with uh, Mal Fletcher, who's a social commentator and a futurist who looks into the future, and in particular at this question, which is becoming more and more prevalent with uh, an ageing population. Um, we've talked about, Mal, um, no getting away from it. It's, it's something to celebrate that we're getting older and all living longer, but there is also a growing tension about this as well, isn't there? Yes, there is. And part of the tension, Jamie, has to do with the fact that the millennial generation under 30 are going to be covering the bills for our retirement. You know, and add to that what I mentioned earlier, which is this digital revolution, um, which also creates problems in in whether, you know, societies are cohesive enough to face rapid change together. Uh, Psychologists now have coined a new term they call absent presence. Um, and I think all the parents listening to this will relate, it describes what happens when you have a room full of people who are not to all intents and purposes really there because they're too busy engaging in cyberspace oh, to have yeah. encounters. Tell me about it. Yeah? You're talking to someone <laughs> and they're tweeting someone else who's probably a- across the room from them anyway. Um, so things like that are, are a concern as we try to build cohesive societies where generations work together. What is when we look to the future then have you we, we've sort of identified the potential areas of difficulty and challenges where are the solutions where do we find them well i think for example education can do an awful lot um i had a, a tweet yesterday from a nurse uh, who said that there's too much emphasis in in her profession now on classroom education and not enough on developing practical skills such as empathy and patient care Uh, and that was an important issue as you know in the NHS just in the last week or so. So business too can play a role I think. Um, Big companies now like IBM and Microsoft are using both mentoring and reverse mentoring. You know not only are the older workers mentoring the young teaching them street savvy you know adding wisdom to their knowledge but you've got younger people now training older colleagues in some of the things they're good at like handling digital technology and all of that helps to build bridges. 
There's a sort of undercurrent in this conversation about um, suggesting that um, that older people should be given an opportunity to make even more of a contribution to the society that's looking after them. I mean, many of those people will say, hang on, we've, we've paid into the system all our lives. Why should we contribute any further? Well, I, I do think that, you know, uh, baby boomers, as, as we get older, are more active than our parents were. We're certainly more able to invest in things like holidays and adventure experiences than our parents ever were. But I do think that we can ease the burden on the next generation when it comes to our retirement. We can take a little more responsibility, some of us anyway, for, you know, our retirement. As people get older, as they live longer, they are becoming more active And it is possible, even in these austere times, for us to take a good holiday now and again, have some fun without spending all of our savings to do it. Um, I think we can ease the pain on the next generation and provide a great example for uh, what it means to really uh, decide your own destiny, in a sense. Have you looked at the attitudes of the younger people in our society, perhaps the, you know, the very young, the under the under 25s, let's say, um, and how they feel about the prospect of, of looking after older people? What are their attitudes to that? Well, the under 25s are an interesting generation because actually you've got two generations there. You've got the millennials and then you've got the, the young Gen Zs, as some are calling them now. We're running out of letters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the millennials are, are very interesting because they're quite civic-minded. They grew up with a lot of parental involvement, most of them, so they tend to be quite optimistic and fairly confident that they can shape the future for the better. Um, And part of the change we we see uh, needs to be getting these generations not only talking together, but doing things together for the common good. Millennials are very attracted by anything that has a civic purpose, that that changes something for the common good. And uh, we older generations can involve them in practical ways in doing that, using things like digital media to involve them. Well, it's very easy for every generation to look at the, uh, the, the, the crises and the challenges it faces and think to itself, well, we're the first people ever to have dealt with this before. But this, this is an age-old story, isn't it? Haven't the young and the old always sort of uh, had to grapple with this kind of thing? What's new about the circumstances that, that we face? Yes, well, that's interesting, Jamie, because if you read some of the writers of ancient Greece, you find them making comments about young people that are pretty much the same as people (laughs) make today. So, you know, what goes around comes around. It's a cycle. But the big difference, I think, uh, or one of the big differences, is the speed of change, and with that, our reliance on technologies. You know, in Japan now, aged care homes purchase things called therapeutic robots. They're programmed to help old people who are suffering from things like severe loneliness, even Alzheimer's disease. And last year, a Japanese study showed that people who've used the robots prefer them to the human carers because the level of attention they get is greater. So the technology is wonderful, but we have to keep this debate going about whether or not it remains our servant, whether we can use it to help us work together to achieve problem, uh, solve the problems. And so, Mal, do you think as we get older that we shouldn't, uh, as Jamie and I do a lot of the time, say, oh, no, I, I can't work that. Is there anyone that can do that? You know, we, we do um, defer stuff to, to younger, more technically able uh, colleagues and friends. Um, so do, do you think really we need to take more responsibility and learn and keep up, really, keep up with the digital, digital world? Yes, well, and I, I'm encouraged by the fact that in Northern Europe today, one of the fastest growing groups when it comes to using the Internet are the over 60s. Yes. You know, so, so there are people out there who are as you, investing time, as you say, to uh, learn the new skills. But because we're relying so much on digital media, there's so much information ca- coming at us every day, it means there's often less time for reflection or processing. And that is something that older people do very well, and that's an important thing they can offer to the conversation. Mal, interesting stuff. Thank you so much for coming on the programme this morning. Mal Fletcher, 